I've seen a lot of advice passed around on YouTube about what programming languages you should learn for physics research uh, and why. I've also had a few questions from viewers about talking more about numerics on the channel. So here I thought it'd be nice to just tell everyone uh, my workflow with computational physics and a bit about how coding uh, will be more of a feature on the channel going forward. I'll get into why I use the languages I do and talk about some awesome packages I use to accomplish my projects. So the first place to start is operating systems and coding environments. Here, I don't really have uh, a preference. If you code on Windows, that's fine. I'm a big fan of Spider for Python, uh, which is a fully functioning environment for Python, uh, which is sort of fine tuned for numerical computing. I especially like the variable explorer functionality. Uh, it, it's set up with Python 3, uh, which I'll get to later, uh, but overall it comes out of the box ready to go, um, and I've used it since early on in my undergraduate degree. I also use uh, C++ on Windows. Um, I like to use code blocks when I'm programming on Windows, uh, which is free uh, and a relatively low weight uh, IDE. But for operating systems, I've also used Linux. On my workstation at the university in the past, uh, I've used Fedora and I've actually liked that a lot as well. From an operating system perspective um, in numerical computing, all you should really be looking for here is comfort and growth in the direction you want to take your skills. However, if you plan on focusing uh, a lot on computational physics, I'd encourage you to get some command line Linux experience. Linux distributions uh, like Fedora or, or Ubuntu are about as straightforward as Windows. It's in my opinion easier to get Python or C++ or any programming language up and running on them without a hassle. Uh, this could also be helpful because most serious uh, numerical groups will have access to a supercomputer and you need to eventually upload your code there and uh, this will take at least some elementary knowledge of command line Linux, things like copying files, compiling on, on the command line, and so on. So now on to programming languages. If you guessed it based off of me already revealing it earlier in the video, I primarily use Python and C++. Oftentimes I hear people on YouTube describe Python as the go-to. Python is the first language I really dove into as an undergraduate, and I learned a lot of my background in numerical computing with it. I also used MATLAB during my early years, uh, but let's isolate the discussion to things that are free to use. Python is great for numerical computing. It has tons of packages. And if that sounds interesting to you, uh, to learn Python more thoroughly, check out Mr. P Solver's uh, YouTube channel if you haven't already. He has endless content on using Python to, so uh, to solve a ton of physics problems. I primarily uh, use Python, however, uh, for data processing and uh, proof of concept type things. Most of my articles have plots generated in Python where Python probably processed a ton of raw data uh, to get points uh, that appear on the plot, uh, but those data points were produced elsewhere. But Python's downfall is its speed for me. While some packages are incredibly fast, like NumPy, uh, the backend is written in C. So single calls to the library can be just as fast as a compiled language. The problem, however, is when we get into the territory of complex algorithms like Quantum Monte Carlo or any algorithm that is going to utilize a lot of CPUs at the same time or a lot of memory. So for me, all of my code, which generates data to be processed uh, by Python, uh, comes from C++, a compiled language. If you haven't coded in C++ yet, uh, or a compiled language at all, I highly recommend learning at some point. Even if you stick just with Python, it will probably improve your coding skills uh, in Python as well. Another advantage that you have in C++ is modern packages. A big package for me is Eigen C++, which is a linear algebra library. If you ever try to diagonalize something or manipulate vectors or matrices in any way, you'll be hard pressed to find an easier uh, to use package than Eigen. There are a few optimization things to watch out for when you use Eigen, uh, but once you recognize this, uh, the package itself is incredibly fast and 
uh, amazingly useful. Uh, another awesome library is iTensor. A lot of modern algorithms in condensed matter physics uh, rely on tensor network type algorithms uh, like density matrix renormalization group or time evolved block decimation. iTensor makes your life a lot easier, giving you all of the ingredients uh, you need to start writing these algorithms out of the box. So after uh, writing the script for this video and seeing a bunch of comments on YouTube, uh, and Reddit, I think I'd like to upload a bit more uh, coding videos uh, to the channel. So I think I'll start a scientific computing series with C++, so stay tuned for that. The first video should be next week. So other languages that I see that are quite popular uh, include Mathematica or Maple, uh, symbolic computing languages that make a lot of really complex expressions you may or may not be able to evaluate by hand, uh, a lot easier to handle. They'll clean the expressions up for you, symbolically evaluate uh, an integral, and so on. In my uh, most recent article, a collaborator used Mathematica to clean up an expression uh, with over 1,000 terms in it. Uh, so definitely uh, it's a nice skill to have and to pick up if you have the opportunity. MATLAB, as I mentioned uh, earlier, is also quite good. A lot of mathematicians I know like it a lot, um, and certainly it has its pros. You aren't going to find faster algorithms for matrix-related things than in MATLAB, for example. But anyway, the moral of the story is um, just learn what you can and pick up skills as you need them. By the time I started graduate school, uh, I knew all of the languages that I mentioned in this video, but I certainly wasn't, and I still am not, uh, a master of every aspect of those languages that I mentioned. But that's it for this video, everyone. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.